Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Leach. I'm Scotland's National Clinical Director. And I just wanted to record a message for a couple of reasons to speak to Scotland's faith and belief network around the country. I've had the real privilege of spending a lot of time with the leaders of Scotland's faith groups around the pandemic and share information in both directions about restrictions, about data, about where we're headed, and to hear from them, whether you're in a synagogue, a temple, a mosque, or a church, about how it has felt to be inside that faith community. The first thing I wanted to do was thank you, each and every one of you, for the work you've done, both in your communities, for those you serve, and in your places of worship, to keep them as safe as you possibly can. I hear stories all the time of food banks and churches, and food being delivered from mosques and temples and synagogues and other places around the country. So thank you. I can't imagine this pandemic without our faith groups. The second thing I want to do is just give you a quick update on where we are just now. And I'm going to do that with just a couple of slides, if you'll forgive me, and if the technology doesn't let us down. So let me just show you where we are both in the world and in Scotland. So this is the global position. These are data from positive tests around the world. You can see where the hotspots are. They're in the US, they're in Mongolia, they're in Eastern Europe, and they're in the UK, unfortunately. Some of this is not completely accurate, so we don't get much testing out of Africa, so we think the position is worse there than this map would suggest. Let's go a bit closer to home quickly and show you the Scottish data. This is about a year's worth. This is from last September holiday weekend to now. And you can see the third wave very clearly. These are cases per 100,000 over seven days. Maybe you've got used to seeing that in our announcements. And you can see just in the last few weeks, probably two weeks or so, we've kind of got stuck at about 2,500 cases a day. That would suggest that the R number for Scotland is one or thereabouts, and each positive person is on average giving the virus to one other person. And that means, unfortunately, at 2,500, you get 2,500. It's not 5,000, but it's not 250. So we've got to continue to be cautious, particularly as we go into the winter period. This shows you the UK data. So dark is bad, light is good. And you can see in Scotland, actually things getting a little bit better and just beginning to go a little bit darker again. But you can see England and Wales continuing to be a darker color, I'm afraid. And England's cases in particular uh, over the last week or so have begun to just tick up just that little bit. These are the data for that last six weeks or so. And you can see that Scotland is now the lowest of the four UK countries, but nothing to be complacent about. Still concerned, still worried. And we were the highest on this table for quite a little while after schools opened after the summer. So not a place any country wants to be. And we're keen that all of us end up in a better place. But what about the harm that causes? What about moving from cases to actual harm? So these are the data that show our admissions and our intensive care cases. So these are the number of people in hospital in Scotland with a COVID test in the previous 28 days. And we're around 900. It's been 1,900, 890 over the last couple of weeks. And we've been relatively consistent for the last few weeks with 50 patients in intensive care. And intensive care is not a good place to go. We don't do it lightly. And your risk, I'm afraid, once you get to intensive care of death is, is significant. So COVID still causing harm. Now, this shows you, though, the effect of what's happened in this third wave. Forgive the shorthand, but these are the number of people who die with a COVID diagnosis over the whole pandemic from April 20, from March rather 2020, right up to last week, the October 2021. And you can see, even with large numbers of cases over the last few weeks, our mortality rate remains really quite low compared to wave two and wave one. And that is due to pretty much one thing and one thing only, and that's vaccination. That's both the NHS getting the vaccine out, but also you coming for your vaccine when you're due. It's still a disease that is most risky 
to those who are older. There isn't any question about that. But vaccination rates have just been astonishing. So these are the percentage of the population vaccinated over the whole period of the vaccination program for first and second doses. And you can see pretty much the whole population over 60 begins to slacken off just a tiny bit in the over 50s. But even there, it's approaching pretty much everybody. And just in the last few days, we've got to nearly half of the 12 to 15 year olds and three quarters of the 16 and 17 year olds. So please, please, please get your vaccine when it's due, whether it's a first, a second or a booster dose, whoever you are, wherever you are, when you're due, get your vaccine. It is the safest and simplest way of protecting yourself. So my two final lessons are very, very simple. You can make yourself as COVID safe as you can, but you should also make your environment as COVID safe as you can. So to make yourself as COVID safe as you can, that's principally vaccination. But that's also about, if you're asymptomatic, testing twice a week. We give you those available online. They're free. They're lateral flow tests. They're now just nasal swabs. You don't have to do the tonsils anymore because the technology has improved. And follow the hygiene rules. Now, that means indoor face coverings in particularly in crowded areas. There are some exemptions if you're eating, drinking, exercising, or dancing. But everywhere else you are, whether you're in a theater, a cinema, a place of worship, then face coverings for now are still required. And that's to try and hold these infections in these cases at as low a rate as we possibly can. Don't forget the normal things, the hand washing, the wiping, the maybe just holding back with large indoor gatherings if you possibly can. Just be careful. And let's hope that over this winter, as we move through this next phase, we can get to a position where even the few restrictions that we've got left can be removed. So thank you once again for everything you've done. And thank you for listening today.